the moment I saw the Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer, I was hooked. And as I watched it, the hype built inside me and then the epic moment where Aver saw a god walking amongst them. He had been given a sign, and at that moment, I channeled my inner viking and readied myself. Odin is with us! Odin is with us! Odin! Yeah, well, my name's Ragtag, the greatest gutter to your gamer on the face of this earth, and today I'm going to give you an overview of what to expect in this instalment of the Assassin's Creed franchise, and right now, my merry band of warriors are on their way for a little friendly raid on a nearby village. Nothing serious, just a little... Hey, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, well, yeah, that's n nothing... <laughs> Slight, slight malfunction with the rudder, I think, there. Yeah, um, yeah, but nothing serious. Just like a night out on the town with the boys. So whilst there's plenty to do in this game, if you're like me, you just want to know what happens when you bring your axe down upon thine enemies and smite them back to their Christian god from whence they came. As I came directly from Assassin's Creed Odyssey before this one, I was expecting a few things that simply weren't there. The perfect dodge, for example, that slows down time, allowing you to cheese your foe with seemingly blinding speed. Uh, yeah, that didn't exist, and little did I know that it is in fact a skill that you can spec into later on. But let me be clear, the English town folk might be no match for a Viking, but the warriors from this island race are not easily conquered. Which again, I came from playing Odyssey where walking into a garrison as a one-man army was completely fine. So unless you want to play this on Goo Goo Gaga difficulty, I really wouldn't recommend that here. The bread and butter of a Viking loadout is the axe and the shield so you can block and parry with it. But of course, you can roll with two axes. A two-handed axe. Or even two shields. Yes, I said it. Too shiny! Okay, then they're, they're not shiny, but there's two of them! Anyway, learning the art of combat while being on a raid was quite an experience for me, but it was also a good time to learn that health does not automatically regenerate, dodges use stamina, and that doors made of English oak require a pal to come and help you pilfer those goodies inside. Once you get around the basics, you start to notice the nice little touches, like when you're fighting someone else with a shield, you can see and hear the thing breaking down as you hack away at it. Not to mention that if you get an enemy on the ground, push the right stick down to bring your foot down right on their sternum. Special attacks come in the form of things such as throwing your axes, but yeah, if they have a shield it isn't quite as effective, but I was still learning the ropes at this point. However, that doesn't mean I didn't vent my frustration on my enemy for ruining a cool looking move, so I gave him a lesson on what happens to those who block. I hear you all like football in England. Anyone for a quick game? Anyone? The hardest thing about Assassin's Creed Valhalla is actually the pronunciation of this area we find ourselves in, and I still don't think I've managed it successfully yet, but I'm going to do it for you now. It's Leicester... Ledest... Leicester... Leicester... Leicestershire... Let... Let it just shove it up your shire, I don't know. Anyway, there are of course things you will recognize from previous Assassin's Creed games, such as using a bird to scout your surroundings, or climb to the top of a landmark to survey the land before senselessly plummeting below into a pile of leaves that would... Well, I think they'd leave you with multiple spine fractures, to be honest with you, but in case you didn't know, 9th century leaves were much softer back then than they are now. But where's the stealth, you might be asking? Oh, oh, it's there, and we'll get to that in more detail later, but for now, if they don't hear you, it's fine. However, those threat indicators are more like guidelines, because if you stab someone out in the open, you can be fairly sure that the enemy are not going to be too happy about it. Occasionally, you will come across stronger opponents who have a specific name. Sometimes it's Bob or Alistair, but today, it's Pikeman, and they are smarter than your average goat. They will block, parry, and the pike is actually a challenging weapon to dodge against as it is surprisingly quick. However, this is a good time to call on Odin for a mighty leap to make your opponent stumble, and by now you should be realizing that anyone on the ground should be kicked swiftly in the head. But what about our main character, Eivor? What's his story? Well, to be honest with you, who cares? But on top of being a skilled combatant, he is actually a connoisseur of a great many things, not least of all, conversation. And Eivor has been studying the art of flighting. Yes, you heard me, not fighting, it's flighting, which is actually the earliest version of having a rapper showdown where wit with words is your sword. 
In flighting, you'll need to be cutting and keen. It's about wielding wit more than venting your spleen. If I tell you you're foolish and stupid and dull... Then I will spit in your face and I will bash in your skull. Perfect, yes! <laughs> you could destroy me with such a line. I'll bet you'd like Eivor to destroy you, you dirty, dirty devil, you! There's also a game involving dice with various axes and swords on them and... Yeah, I didn't know what was going on after that man stole my pebbles, I just wanted to bury my axe into his face. Anyway, I'll try and keep the main storyline relatively spoiler-free, but inevitably anything I show you will introduce you to people that you might remember. So let's just cut to... Eivor needed to see a gargantuan Danish woman about a bit of business. No, no. I must be careful now. Sigurd, what brings you strolling into my camp this brisk day? I suspect you already know. And who are you, lovely dove? Want to perch your ass on my lap? That's not why I'm here. You're dealing with me now, and I want to know what you know. Name your price. Very well. I could use another cow, and you can cover the cost. Obviously, I'm not buying her a cow for the information on a piece of paper, so this is a nice little touch that shows the game has two ways to achieve the same end. I take you for desperate beggars. I can smell it on you like dung heap. Now that's my price. What say you? You heard me the first time. But I'll get what I need, one way or another. No, no. You have shut your chance. And if you show your faces around here once more, I will tear you limb from limb. I'm getting that information, but I'm not paying for it. Now, stealth, as many of you know, is definitely my area of expertise, at least for the first 60 seconds. And it is absolutely awesome to jump on your unsuspecting prey for a quick and silent kill. Naturally, those carts of hay make for a nice, surreptitious stab and corpse yoink. Odin's Sight is a gift that gives you full thermal vision, but when looking from the godly realm, yeah, it can confuse your positioning and my 60 seconds of stealth were up anyway. Chancing my luck inside the pile of hay was a smart option, that is, uh, until my enemies poked me at the other side. Sniffing through Tana's belongings revealed one of many little pieces of lore scattered throughout the game, and these are incredibly well written, deserving of a narrator to come along and read them out to you. I have seen Repton's insides, what those Danes have done to it in such a short time. You can hardly tell the town was once Saxon. This Ragnarsson army is well led. To stand between them and Mercia's throne would be our death. Instead, we will balance on the fringes gather secrets and squeeze the most out of each side. It is a dangerous game, but it is one we are fit for. Anyway, yeah, we'd actually alerted the whole camp because we refused to buy a cow for Tana, so now it was time to finish everyone who followed her because, well, actually, I just didn't know where I was going, so I just fought anyone that came looking for it. Finally, though, I stumbled across what I was looking for. Let's see what secrets you keep, Tona. To the one called Tana. Oh, who cares? We, we got what we came for. Let's just get out of here. The only sad part was I didn't know if I'd ever bump into her again. But lucky for me, she was actually right above me and I had no idea how to turn off those thermal goggles. But it didn't matter. Bad idea, lovely dove. Now I'm going to make you to the... Straight to hell. I threw Tonna at her guards, gave them a taste of my axe, jumped into a convenient pile of hay, and left the scene. Yes indeed, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is shaping up to be the finest installment of the entire series so far. Combat is exciting and challenging, the combat skill tree looks complicated, but it's not too bad, I'll cover that in a bit more detail in the next video, and most importantly, you can perch yourself somewhere random and blow the raiding horn just because you feel like it. 
More Assassin's Creed videos coming, so please do subscribe for that alongside Apex. Watch Dogs Legion will be coming soon, and Immortals Phoenix Rising and Far Cry 6 when that comes out. I'm going to cover them all. Might even try that daft Riders Republic thing as well. Alright, that's going to do it for now. Take it easy. Catch you in the next one. Later.